Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Sorry, I've had a bit of a break recently. Um, you see a video coming out on the skyline soon on what I've had to do to it to get it to pass registration. But um, we're back on to the Civic today with some more mods. This one's another interior cosmetic upgrade. So I'll show you the parts that I've ordered. So this is like a cluster fascia set that I bought from Russia on eBay. So it's a copy of a Spoon Sports EG6 Japanese cluster. So it only goes to 180 kilometers per hour. So I bought this, I think it was 70, 80 or 90 dollars with postage from Russia. And it took about a month and a half to come. And it's just the, the fascia inlay. So you can see it's still, the back, the lighting on the back will still work. So what we need to do is remove the old cluster, take the clear cover off, take the needles off and remove this fascia and switch it over. So we'll get to inside the car and I'll show you how to remove the cluster. Okay, so now we're in the car. There's two screws up here you just need to remove. So just, you've got your plug for your hazard lights and another plug up here for the clock, which you'll need to remove. So now you can see those two screws on the side here and two screws on this side. Just FYI guys, mine must have been broken, um, but there's a screw here just behind this hazard, single, hazard signal light that is just on the side there as well. Uh, you'll need to pop out, you'll need to pop out your hazard lights. Just squeeze both sides like that and push through. And that's how you remove it. And then through the hole, you'll be able to get to that screw that's there. So there was one plug on the left and one plug on the right and the cluster is out. Okay, so you've got your cluster out now. As you can see in mine, I got, a, I got a spider in there. So first we need to remo remove this, the clear uh, lens on it. So on the bottom here, there's a couple of tabs. So you just want to twist the flathead along there. There's a bit of glue adhesive just holding it down. So that should come up. Oops. So you can just see the self adhesive marks along the bottom. So I just went with this razor blade and just cut them off. And then these tabs are just locating, they're just locating tabs. So just lift straight off. Looks like my one might have been um, opened before. So next we've got to remove this plastic surround piece. So we have to remove these tabs here.
the black piece for the odometer reset, I just twisted it a few times holding the shaft and I was able just to break it free. It's just a, just a piece of rubber tip on there. So then once you remove that, you can then lift the, that bezel off. And then now we have the fascias. So now we're gonna ne we need to remove the needles to get the fascia up. I suggest you take a picture of where the needles are and most importantly your fuel tank. So when you put it back on, it's not going to be offset. Okay. So you just use the two flat heads under each side of the needle and then twist them in opposite direction. And then they lift off. Once you've removed your two screws, then the fascia backing comes off. And you can actually see the, the motor or the dial for that RPM signal. So the hole here was a little bit small to transfer the needle stop. So I just got a a two mil drill bit and just opened it up by hand and I was able to get that stop in there. Next, reinstall that. And the RPM needle. So just FYI, if you're in Australia or probably Europe, you have this speedometer and the Japanese one only goes to 180 and at the same point that's like 210 kilometers per hour on your current one. So just matching them up, it looks like the JDM one reads about 10 kilometers slower. So if you're going 40 on here, it's like 50. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and when you're going, if you want to go 100 you should be on the 90 mark. So one thing to keep in mind while you're driving, you can't do the same speed as you used to do on the old one. So this one, I have to put the screw in because none of these tabs actually lock down on the dowels in there. So I've just got the two lined up like that, they're exactly the same. And I'm just going to hold the other side of the face and I've got a two and a half mil drill bit.
So the fascia does sit on there, but um, it's not glued down, it's still loose. So I just got some super glue, and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the top and the bottom here. So just those two bits on the top and bottom should be enough to, to hold that lens on. And finally, just got to install the rubber tip. And there you have your spoon cluster. Now's a good time to check all your bulbs as well, just to make sure none of them are blown. Alright, so I've just put the bezel back in and I've got the cluster now installed. So that's what it looks like. Alright guys, so finished up the install and um, shown you what it looks like. So pretty happy with the look and the outcome. A bit annoying that I had to drill those holes and I'm not sure if it's actually made to glue over the top of your existing one and you just put the needle back over. We've removed everything off anyway and put it on and it looks good and I've just turned the car on accessory and all the lights were working so that's good. Can't start the car unfortunately because uh, the battery's gone flat. So I've just got the battery charger on, on at the moment and then I can start it later and see how the gauge works. Alright, like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you for the next video. Cheers.